Greetings and salutations, everyone. I hope everyone is still doing well and welcome to today's bonus upload. And it is a very interesting bonus. Before we get into it, though, a couple links. As many of you know, I rely on Patreon, PayPal, channel membership, and the merch to help the channel to continue to grow and go. Links to Patreon, PayPal, channel membership is in the description below. Merch displayed directly under the video. Also, Dogman Frightening Encounters, Volume 1 through 3, the audiobook versions. They were written and researched by Tom Lyons, narrated and produced by me, Jeff Nadolny. Those audiobooks are available on Audible, Amazon, and iTunes, links to which are also in the description as well. And finally, last but definitely not least, if you'd really like to help support the channel to continue to grow and go, simply subscribe. It doesn't cost a cent. Click that like button. Takes half a second. If you don't want to miss out on any of the informative uploads I put out daily, click that bell icon and folks, please leave a comment. Why? Well, because all these things really do help this channel to continue to grow and go. And folks, they definitely do matter. Now, everyone, I have taken far too much of your time. Let's jump into today's bonus, shall we? So like I've been saying for the last week, um, I am getting everything together for the book that Victor had initially written and was taken off of Amazon very quickly. Um, if you, if you really want to see, you type in Victor Johnson in the Amazon search bar and what pops up as you type in Victor Johnson, the first thing that pops up Dogman book, Victor Johnson, Victor Johnson Cryptid Hunter, um, Victor Johnson Cryptid, Book, and Dogman. So the book was set to be on Amazon. Uh, the government came in and took it down. I am going to finish the project for my dear friend who I do miss on a daily basis. Um, and I am going to publish it, but I, so it doesn't get taken down. I'm putting it out as fiction, which he and I had discussed uh, about a year and a half ago. So I've been going through all of the information, old interviews and such, and Q and A's, and um, to get not just the hunts, because I'm going to have the book, the book has probably six hunts in them or in it, but I want to include information that he shared. Now, remember, he was not a scientist. He was only a hunter. He hunted these creatures. He knew what he knew via hunting them or via who he spoke with on the inside of the community. Um, he did know some scientific things, but not everything. And he would be the first to tell you that. It's not me insulting the man. Uh, he would be the first to say, hey, I'm not a scientist. I don't know. I can find out for you. Uh, so when I was going through today and I found um, this interview where he talks specifically about the use, <clears throat> excuse me, about the use of dogman slash werewolf in Vietnam, I was like, man, oh man, this is a bonus right here because this is some very interesting information. Um, <clears throat> a lot of people, interestingly enough, four years ago when Victor came on my show, not many people were talking about werewolves used in, do used in Vietnam. Rock apes, reptilians were significant things spoken about. <clears throat> Victor comes on gets annihilated by the haters and trolls, and then shares a ton of information, and now his information has leaked out into the community and is used on a daily basis. Um, I just, I, I, I love how trolls and the community works. Not this community, not our community here, but the outside community that, you know, sponsors these meet and greets and charges you $20 for an entrance fee so they can pad their pockets. Um, 
this information should be, you know, freely given and allowed to everyone. Um, researchers are researchers. They're not experts. So I don't know how they can charge money to just see you and shake your hand. It's crazy. It's absolutely crazy. Anyway, let's get into this very interesting interview. Out of the blue, I received a call from Victor and he told me that he had some very interesting information to share with me um, about a kind of op that occurred in Vietnam. So, Victor. Yes. How are you? I'm here. I'm good. How are you? I'm very good. I'm very good. I, um, I'm glad that I've got you on today. Um, that way people can know that you're alive. I've got a lot of emails saying, hey, what's up with Victor? Is he alive? He is very I'm, much alive. <laughs> I'm still here. So, um, how's dialysis and everything going? Dialysis is going well. Doing it every day now. Uh, so, it's keeping me cleaned out, doing well. Right. Kidney's doing good, and, you know, trying to trying to, you know, start, restart a little bit, but not as much, not enough to keep me going for long periods of time. I can skip days at a time, but I can't go for an extended amount of time. Okay. You know, uh, but, uh. Now, that was a big thing that I kind of wanted to clear up because the last time we had you on, we had talked about you going on vacation with your kids and to Portlock, um, Alaska, and you had yep. started dialysis, and a couple people had asked about that. And um, the answer was that you really didn't, at the time you were just starting it, and I was it was just getting underway. My kidneys were still producing at the time. And I was able to go at that time. When I took that, I could probably go two weeks without it. But it was better if I was on it, you know, a lot quicker than that. But you know, after, at the end of the two weeks, you know, I could tell that I was getting sicker and sicker. And I know that it was a dialysis and I had to, I had to get home or something bad was going to happen. Right. And, uh, so that, so, that, that'll clear that up. Um, oh, okay. <laughs> now okay. the, um, the operation in Vietnam, you had talked about when, I gosh, probably a couple of months into you and I talking about everything going on um, with the program back when your dad was, you know, doing things and you weren't even involved in it yet. No. Um, they were kind of using them as tunnel rats. Yes. So... Uh. I'm going to turn the floor over to you. That way you can kind of share everything that you that you learned because you learned a, some pretty I, information. So, Yeah. I, I, how it all came to be was the other day somebody had tracked me down. No, I don't know how, but they did. They found me. Got hold of my phone number. Called me. And introduced himself and everything and we got to talking and he said that he knew about Project Werewolf and that caught my attention and I said oh really and he told me that he was a handler for Project Werewolf back in the day and when he was in Vietnam and that uh, they use them for as tunnel rats or 
for it. Just going in to, to take out a high profile individual to just anything they needed done, they could get it done when like a human wasn't able to get to this person. Right. Or this person was supposed to be underground and they had tracked down and know what tunnel system they was in and everything. Okay. And uh, now, so it went up. Uh, just it, to clarify okay. something, if I could. Um, okay. he's, a, he's a handler. He's in Vietnam. But he is not. He's not a soldier. He is an operative, correct? He's what? He's, he's not a soldier, but he's an operative. I'm assuming that working for the same company your dad and you worked for? Uh, yes. Okay. Uh, he was, he was one of the handlers. So, uh, he, he wouldn't have been sent out on today's missions in that word of the sense. Right. Because all he dealt with was, was, the, was his group of werewolves. And, uh, he, uh, you know, that's what he shared with me about using his that he was assigned to, or they was assigned to him, either, either which way you want to look at it. And, uh, he was telling me, you know, how they got them in country and everything, you know, they was flown over, they wasn't tranquilized, they sat in the, they sat in the back of big cargo uh, plane, flown over just like troops was. And in the beginning, there was 150 in total sent over there. Mm. And uh, so they've got them in these holding places, you know, and they're feeding them like they was back in Virginia and all being trained. And they get ready to go to Vietnam. They put them on plane, get them over there, yada, yada. And they're waiting on their missions. Well, he starts drawing some individual targets, you know, just not no, not no high-ranking officers, nothing, just officers that need to go away. And they would show them pictures of them give them general descriptions, you know, and show them the pictures of who they was after and tell them that whatever gets in your way, you know, just take it out. Mm. So he did about three or four missions like this where he he took out low-ranking individuals and all. And then one day they hit him with... We want to use some underground tunnel rats. He was concerned of, about their size, and he said, well, let's pick the smaller ones. Pick the smallest ones you've got to go into the tunnels. And he said, we'll try. And he said, you know, you know, they're, they're, his smallest was probably four times one one human being. So you're talking about probably a hundred fifty pound man. So you're talking five hundred fifty six hundred pound werewolf to get down in a tiny hole to get down into these tunnels. Which the real tunnel rats of Vietnam had told us that after you get into the tunnels, they open up quite a bit. Mm-hmm. And they said they'll have no, no trouble getting in it. He said it's get through the openings to get them down into the tunnels. He said that's where your problem's going to lie, is getting a werewolf down into that tunnel. And uh, he said after after they would get in there, they would be, be able to move around more freely. Well... Finally, there came a day where he was asked to take two 
of his tunnel rats to they was going to try them out on this one tunnel. They they knowed where the entrance was and they knowed where the exit was, and they was going to try them out. And on this first one that they did, there was supposed to be about a hundred and twenty operatives in there, and they knowed they knowed of three openings on where they could come out. And the fourth being the one that they was going down into. There could have been far more, or far, you know, or, or, you know, don't know how many more holes there could have been that they didn't know about. Mm -hmm. But they had been watching, <clears throat> and they, they know this one area. So they take two over there. I guess they had picked, I'm guessing on this, he didn't tell me this, but I, I'm guessing they picked the biggest hole to put them down into, of what the holes that they had. And then they put GIs at the end of the other three, you know, if they come running out, you know, they're going to shoot them down. And told them to make sure their target, make sure what was one of the werewolves and because he was the only handler he was going to get them in the holes and he was going to go to the next place where they was they thought they would come out and uh, he said that they got him down into the hole and he had to go he said one click to get to the biggest next place that he, they all thought they would come out. And there was two other places in between that that they had found that they could come out. But they was going to have GIs on them too and the first one they started in. Anyway, they get them down into the holes and they tell them to kill everything in there. Men, women, children, everything. Kill them all. And uh, he goes to the other end. Been there a couple hours. Hadn't heard nothing from him. No way to communicate with him. And all of a sudden they get a radio call from the second hole that was in line and said the werewolves just busted out right here and went tearing through the jungle, wasn't slowing down for nobody. And uh, went on, they got some real tunnel rats over there. He went down in there and went through the tunnel, popped his head up at each, each opening, let him know that it was cleared to that point. Got to the third one, said it was cleared to that point. And this guy at the third point told him to tell the handler he didn't really want to meet these things underneath there, but they kept telling him that they'd jumped out and ran. They'd jumped out and ran. And he was just worried to death he was going to meet one of these things in there and they was going to take him out. Right. And uh, so he pokes his head back down in the under and goes on, comes out at the end. He said that was them two offshoot tunnels was the only two offshoot tunnels that he's seen in the entire distance of it. And he said, everybody's in there dead. And he said, I'll have nightmares over this for the rest of my life. Mm. Yeah, they weren't small. Those those tunnel systems, they were, they were, you know, there was different levels to them. So there was probably yeah. a quite quite a decent amount of, of Viet Cong in there. Yes. And yeah. they just went through and tore everything up. They tore everybody up. Wow. And, uh, but when they got out to the end, they broke and ran. 
Right. Well, them two is gone. They, they, you know, they, they told, they was told when they went over there, you complete this mission, we'll bring you back here, and we'll turn you loose. You've done your duty. Yeah, because you shared that with us. And uh, he, uh, so they just never searched for him. Never, never went on about anything else. And he said he did two or three more like that where they hit, you know, low numbers of Viet Cong. And uh, they said he got a call one day to bring up two more and said, we've got a large tunnel we want to clear. And he thought it was like the others, you know. And uh, he gets up there and gets ready. And they're giving him his pictures, you know, because there was one specific target in there they wanted to take out. Uh, pretty high up this one was. This one was far up the chain of command. But they'd watched him go in. And this one, I think, had five entrances that they know of. Same setup, same everything. They took, you know, took them to the first biggest opening that they know of. And then the the others kind of ran in a line or offset. Or, mm. Anyway, they said, you think they can handle it? And he said, well, sure. And they told him there's over 500 Viet Cong in there. He said, you know, this is this is the biggest that we've tried. We're just sending two. Why don't we send more? He said, we don't want to lose no more. Because with other handlers through the uh, 28 months that they was over there, they had lost, he had lost two. It's all he had lost at that time. But other handlers had lost 17 more. Mm. So right now they've lost 19 total. And uh, no, they lost 17 total. I'm sorry. He had lost two and they had lost the other handlers. They had lost 13 between them. And uh, so they come out. They put him down in there. He goes to the far end, which he said was three clicks away. He got there. And he's been there for... I, he got there, and he had been there for like three or four hours, and he's thinking something's wrong. Maybe they gunned him down. Maybe they... They... Uh, shot him with something, you know, big and powerful underground that could have killed him. Or, you know, something just went wrong because he didn't feel like it should have took him that long in closed areas like they was having to fight and take these people out in that it shouldn't have taken that long for him to make it through to where he was or to where anybody was. And he sat there another two hours after he got to thinking that. And he said he called for a tunnel rat to be put in to start checking to see what was going on. But to know that it wasn't clear, he had called it in to get him there. And he had arrived at where they put the werewolves in at and he was sitting there at the mouth of the fifth opening. And here they come. They busted out. Wide open. Gone. Said he didn't even have time. He hollered and hollered and hollered, but they wouldn't even slow down for him. And uh, they looked healthy, he said. He said that's about all he could tell about him. He said it was dusky dark. And that's about all that they could tell. 
they was in a hot zone. And the soldiers was on the edge, not on account of the werewolves, but on account of it getting nightfall. And everything was, you know, they was worried about being ambushed, more or less. People right. coming to them openings and going in, and all the GIs was getting nervous about that. He orders two, two of the <clears throat> tunnel rats in, and they go through tunnel by tunnel. They even go down to where they found trap doors lifted up, where they went down. I think he said it went down three levels. And uh, they was into them sections down there and had dead just everywhere. Said it's a mutilation. Mm. Said it is it awful. And uh, said that they finally made it to the end and came out. And he said that. That's, they gave them two different counts. One had counted 523 and one had counted 543 dead. But that they ever, all the tunnels down there was clear. Wow. And uh, no. they said that the government, after this, had got to worrying about these things running loose. And thought that that would come back on them if it, they started just attacking villagers and everybody else. So the government shut down the program, or the White House shut down the program as far as doing what they was doing over there and brought them out. Now, they since then, or even after then, they were sent back in for individual targets. But as far as just a mass scale, like killing everyone like that, they wasn't sitting back in for nothing, no more like that. Now, when they were running, were they, when they came out of the hill, or the, out of the holes, were they weren't, they were just, were they aggressive to the Americans that were at the end of these holes? Or did they just, you know, like you said, they, they, they were on the first go around, there was a couple of uh, GIs at the end. Um, or did they just sprint right by them? They just ran by them. They weren't aggressive towards no U.S. personnel at all. Okay. All right. Now, here's my thing. Here's my question. Why, why was the concern of them being kind of, you know, re not released purposely, but released and then escaped? Why, why wouldn't they, why wouldn't they mind that? You know, I mean, they're promised their freedom already. So why wouldn't they just say, well, you know, I mean, that's gonna, that's, that's less, uh, uh, room on the plane back you know um you, what was the big thing of ha having a couple of those creatures wandering around the vast forests of vietnam in that area well it's they've got a taste for blood at that point mm. okay and most generally when one gets taste for human blood they won't stop. That's when you guys get called in and on in stateside when they get a taste for yes. blood. Yeah. 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 Wow. So. This... In my case, I, I, I can't go into details on this, but just like the case in Idaho right. that I've talked to you about. Right. Now, uh, my question about can... this Vietnam thing more, because um, I kind of want to talk about this for a few more minutes, if you don't mind. Okay. Uh, with the Vietnam case, um, 
you've got all of these creatures that are running around now they're now they're they're kind of got a bloodlust um what did the other ones do there was what 150 so they kind of 150 just, total yeah did they close down the 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 tunnel rat case at that point and ship them back or yeah yeah they all the other 131 came home okay. uh was taken back to virginia uh for some for some training uh i don't know how many he didn't tell me how many was involved in going into the tunnels i'm sure all of them did at one point or the other but as far as knowing exactly how many of them seen or didn't see action so to speak mm -hmm. I don't, I don't know that part. Okay. He didn't, he didn't, he didn't go into no details about that. Right, right. Now the conversation, I'm sure lasted a little while. How, uh, yeah. how, how did uh, it, how did it end? How, you know, like pretty. Oh, we, we talked for close to two hours and, uh, he shared a lot with me about what it was like back then. Mm. Uh, he said that uh, they had tried to use them to track them in the U.S. when something went wrong. And they was not really cooperative okay. on helping with that. At least as far as a werewolf was involved. So if one kind of went rogue, they tried to use another werewolf to track that at that time? Yeah. Okay. All right. But so, evidently that didn't work out very well. Right. So he, he kind of had a clue of what crap was like back in the day before there was all the fancy, you know, electronics and stuff like that that was involved during your time and stuff like that. Right? Oh, no. No, he was, we talked about that a little bit and... He was just amazed at how it had evolved. You know, daylight to dark was his words. Mm. And, uh, which I'm sure it was from way back in the 50s, 60s, 70s. You know? Yeah. Yeah. Even in, even in the 80s, you know, it, it was, it's been evolving ever since. Right. It just keeps on evolving. That's pretty crazy that, you know, like, here you are thinking, <laughs> you know, you've, you've, you know, you've been there for, you, you knew a lot of people in the agency and, you know, out of the blue, you get a call. Hey, I got to talk to you about something. Yeah. And you, you learned something new. That, learned that something point. new. Yeah. Well, I, I enjoyed it because he know he knowed my dad. Right, right. And uh, he uh, he was able to tell me some things that they went through, but he wasn't uh, uh -huh. he wasn't in the field. Right. Now he, what, he worked with them all the time. What was he afterwards? Like, what did he do after? Like, when they came home from from Vietnam. What did he do? Was he like a trainer or something? Yeah, he was a trainer, and he worked with them for, uh, I think he said 12 or 13 more years. Wow. Yeah. That's pretty crazy. That's amazing. Yeah. He was over there from January of 66 to May. They came home 1st of May of 68. 28 months. That's insanity. Yeah. Can, I can't imagine, you know, being an American tunnel rat, an American GI tunnel rat. That's the toughest job there ever was in yeah. the military, <clears throat> as far as Vietnam here. Yeah, yeah. And then... And I mean, he didn't even go into the tunnels. Yeah, imagine he said, that poor he guy. Said, <laughs> he said he's like 6'4", 200 
60 pounds. <laughs> he said he couldn't fit in there. Right. No, but I'm saying, imagine what those poor guys that, you know, had to go in after the the werewolf went through there. You know? Oh, yeah. Imagine what they had to see, the nightmares for the rest of their lives. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I'm, I'm sure they've got PTSD. Absolutely. Absolutely. Now, did he mention, like, uh, how they kept this quiet, like, with the troops? You know what I mean? I'm sure there had to have been at least a couple of hundred American troops that saw this go on, at least. No, there was, there was the handlers, there was the keepers. You know, the keepers were responsible for feeding, getting them water. You know, just really taking care of what they need, whatever they want. You know, if they're hungry, you know, if they tell you they're hungry, get them something to eat. I mean, you don't. You just and imagine keeping them all in one big huge pen over there. Yeah. They're thinking, wow, when we can go out, we got our freedom after a mission. Yeah, yeah. Well, yeah. You know, they wasn't used. They was used sparingly, I guess, mm -hmm. is the word. No, but my thing uh, was, how would they keep, like, okay, so, like, with the GIs that were at the end of the tunnel, or, like, the tunnel rats, what were they told? They knew what was in there. Okay. They they had been briefed on it. Okay, so I'm sure there was, like, a... Some of them, some of them laughed, and some of them said, I hope they come out our hole so we can see them, and, you know, during the briefing, if you want to see them, you can go over there, you can talk to them you know we, they were selected they they selected a certain amount mm -hmm. to be around them uh they had to have a psych evaluation all kind of things disclosure forms filled out and stuff like that and yeah yeah you know <clears throat> I, I and you and i have talked a long time you you and i have have a friendship um, yeah, I hope we do. And I'll, I'll admit, you know, <clears throat> when you and I first started talking, I was like, wow, this is insane. Um, but then now the more that I have, you know, started to kind of broaden my horizons with the channel and looking into like conspiracies of things and projects that are going on that went on back then and are still going on it, it isn't that that crazy to think about you know like if you think about all of the stuff that is going on in like dulce new mexico you know with the genetic um creations i it doesn't seem so far-fetched to me as it as it did in the very beginning like when i first talked to you i was i was like wow this is pretty crazy the first week you know what i mean but then the more i talked to you and the more i learned about you and the more i you know was able to um witness i you know then i knew holy crap this is this is the real deal um you know and i saved the emails that were i were received from the agency telling me to you know yada yada but it just it doesn't seem so crazy now that i'm learning about all of these government or sub-government projects that we as americans aren't even at liberty to even know you know it's it's insane it really is yeah there's there's there's, let's see how to say this. Uh, there's probably three-letter uh, uh, how do I say it? There's three-letter departments like the CIA or the FBI or the SAA or, 
you know, different departments, just saying what I'm just calling off them letters, right. you know, them are pretty well known. And, uh, there's probably 50 that's unknown yeah. to the American people, if not more. Mm. Yeah, it's pretty deep. It's pretty crazy. It's scary. And, uh, you know, in all honesty, the citizens ought to know about all of them. Mm -hmm. I, you know, I can't, I can't do it. Well, then the diet. Right, right. No, but I was just thinking, like, you know, the more I've learned, like, I remember a hunt that you had talked about where you had seen some sort of spider like creature. Yeah. And it was out west. Yeah. And that makes a yeah. lot of sense because of the crap that, you know, I received an email about a week ago almost. 300 and something pages of just information that blew my mind. Like I didn't sleep for a day almost after reading it because I was like, holy crap. But then I think about things and it makes sense, you know, like, wow, this thing that he saw was you were around that area. I mean, you weren't too far from it. So why the hell wouldn't there be something like that out there? Um, yeah. You know, it just, it's pretty crazy what the the powers that be have control of, you know? And it's the powers that be aren't even the people that we think are the powers that be. It's it's that's the, that's the scariest part about it. They're just a puppet, you know? Yep. Damn. And then here you are in in friends of yours in the agency and stuff like that are just, you know, kind of told what you're only supposed to know and you guys are puppets of the, the and it's sad it's pretty sad yeah so now this guy is he he's retired i'm assuming the, the he's retired yeah yeah so he's he's 80 80 something years old i think that's what he said wow 80 80 i probably said he's 80 yeah now, did he tell you how he got involved in the agency or whatnot? Uh, he was in the military, mm -hmm. and he was a Marine, and he was getting ready to get out. He had a spotless record, getting ready. Actually, he had came home from Vietnam and was getting ready to get out. And his record was spotless. He was very intelligent, had a super high IQ, and uh, they approached him and offered him a job. Hmm. Uh, offered him a job as a keeper to start with, and he moved up to a trainer. And then, you know, Back then, you kind of worked your way through the ranks to get up there, or they put you straight into it, depending, you know, on on where you was, but, mm -hmm. or how good you was. And uh, he didn't want to go no further. He wanted to. He wanted to stay a trainer. Right. That was all, that's what he wanted to do. He realized that training them and handling them meant that if they got called on that they him being a handler that he would have to go to and that meant him keeping himself physically fit and he just that was that was the life he chose right <clears throat> yeah. yeah it's pretty it's i don't know it's pretty amazing that that when you came on the show People were talking about Dogman and Bigfoot and a creature that resembled a Dogman and Bigfoot combined. There was not really a name for it. People were using the Micmac name, the Gugwee, for it, which really they didn't. That fit that creature and it fit the Bigfoot creature. But like 
the big three, the big yeah. three was kind of what you brought into the the playing field. You know, you said, "Hey, there are the big three: the dog man, the werewolf, and the Sasquatch." That's what my my special teams uh, hunted, and you know, it's it's pretty crazy that when you first came on you and I were kind of mocked a little bit about that and now there's people talking about the big three there's people instead of saying oh it's just a dog man now they're saying yes there's a werewolf this and that you know and it's it's pretty strange how it went <laughs> to where yeah. you and I I mean when I first had you on I had people making reddit posts about me saying that I was just some piece of garbage and you were a liar and this and that, um, and it was it was hard. And now it's it's kind of I don't know I don't know how I feel about that. How do you feel about that? Wait. Well, I mean it's it's kind of disturbing that it takes up my brought to you. You know I brought it to you. Uh, I picked you. I selected you. I I, I listened and worked. I had permission to pull the string on this six or seven months before I did, mm -hmm. you know, coming to somebody to see if we could get it put out there a little bit safety, right? you know, make them aware of it. Well, they kind of, I guess they, for a better word, they just kind of, when I found somebody, they didn't. They didn't think that we would move forward with it like we did, and we did, and I was so excited, and I think they was getting, they was, they want to do a disclosure, but they don't, they don't want to do a total disclosure. Right. Well, I'm trying to get it out this way, you know, we're going to do it slow, and we're going to do it easy. And then it picked up, and it picked up, and people started copying what you was saying and talking about. Mm -hmm. And I think they backed off on me a little bit, you know, saying all this stuff on account of uh, the other people copying you. Yeah, yeah. You know, I never, I, I have this in my studio and I've got to, I got to, I'll make a copy of it. I don't, I'm surprised I haven't. I feel kind of bad for not, but a, a sub sent this to me and they actually designed, designed a big three file <laughs> and, and it's so neat. I'll, I'll use it as the, I'll use this, this thing as the, uh, thumbnail but i'll make a copy and i'll send it i'll email it to you and okay. it says the big three file and it's got a picture of a human then a bigfoot a dog man and a werewolf and under the bigfoot it says lifespan approximately 100 years the okay. and then the next line bigfoot are mostly territorial u.s breeding program unsuccessful approximate okay. max weight 800 pounds or 362.874 kilograms mostly bipedal maxed height um they put an unknown because they really didn't um then the dog man max lifespan 66 years dog man are nomadic 1954 u.s breeding program trained and tagged Max weight, 220, or 99.7903 kilograms. Prefer running on all fours, but also bipedal. Max height, 6'8", or 1.8288 meters. In 2008, approximately 35,000 were released U.S. Then the werewolf, max lifespan, 68 years. Werewolves, nomadic. 52 U.S. breeding program trained and tagged. 470 pounds max weight or 213.18 kilograms. Mostly bipedal but runs faster on all fours. Max height 8'7 
in 2008, 22,620 were released in the States. The breeding program started in 1952 to 2008. When it ended due to cost, technically, the breeding program continues in the wild. By the time the breeding program ended in 2008, the facility held approximately 22,680 tagged werewolves. Yep. And it talks in the cover page created by who it was created by. But, you know, That's all, this, night. all this information that you shared with me has really kind of opened my eyes to things and made me made me want to kind of dig deeper um i think i was when i started when i first met you i was pretty content with sharing just stories you know yeah and then i think talking to you meeting you kind of lit a fire under my ass and wanted I wanted to learn more I wanted to you know talk about these attacks that are going on um you know I I dove deep into last year's multiple attacks I mean last year was just a a, a shit show for attacks horrendous yeah um and I said it in the beginning of the year I don't know why but I think this year is going to be bad and it was um yeah. and now in virginia they're they're dealing with virginia and west virginia are dealing with something very very unique over there um with bodies turning up and bodies disappearing it's i don't know and i i just yeah. want to thank you because you know if you hadn't approached me i think i would have just been content with narrating encounters and not really learning anything but now it's like i have to i have to learn something new every day to feel like <clears throat> i've achieved something on this channel um to help other people you know and uh yeah. that was our purpose to help other people yeah you, you know, know when, when i talked to you and told you what i wanted to do and kind of how i'd like to do it now you agree we ran with it yeah. and uh it helped a lot of people and i think it still is today yeah yep. you know you still got you've got them stories up and on there and they can listen to them yeah i've got one whole section just dedicated to your hunts and your q, q and a's and this yeah. and that and it's you yeah. know so and you know that that's what it was about yeah and I, I just, it's like you said, these people are stealing, stealing from me. Yeah. Because, that, you know, it's, uh, I thought it's copyrighted materials. So I thought, you know, maybe go after them for a copyright infringement. I don't know. Maybe. But, uh, but, you know, I mean, just at least the, the news is getting out there to people. Yeah, there is. That's right. That's a good thing. You know, like I, I thought it was, I thought it was really beneficial that we learned. Hey, there is, you know, because there was a lot of people talking about Dogman and Bigfoot, but then there was a lot of people talking about a Dogman that was tailless, and seemed yeah. like it was smarter. You know, um, yeah, like the yeah. guys, the the paramedics out in, <clears throat> in uh. Connecticut. That, yeah, that was that's a good example. Yeah, tactically very yeah. intelligent, and I'm wondering, you know, were were they part of the program? I wonder if they were part of the program, and because of how tactical they were. Yeah, and yeah, they had went by it. If you know, they came from the program. They had went by it because they're supposed to protect, not. Mm not do that but them that particular case those were very very tactical yeah yeah moves that they took very incredible very cool well you know i appreciate you coming on and talking with us tonight um 
I know a lot of people are, are going to be happy to hear your voice and that, to know that you're alive. Uh, yeah. I receive emails all the time, you know, just saying, hey, will you check up on Victor? Well, I, I talk to you. <laughs> we don't talk a lot, but we talk often enough. Yeah, we talk, um, we talk every couple of weeks. Yeah. Um, sometimes more often than that. Yeah. And, you know, I've got, we've got something in the mix, working on something. I don't want to yeah. really talk about it too much, but I, I'm pretty excited about what's planned. Um, yep. I am too. So anyway, it was too. great having you on. Um, is there anything that you'd like to say to the audience before we end? The well, interview? I'd like to first thank you for having me back on and, uh, just let you know that, you know, I'm, I'm around if you need, need any questions answered. I'm always just a phone call away. Yeah. And to the audience, you know, just look back at the videos. Remember what I've, what I've told you to do in particular cases. You know, if you're out in the woods and for some reason do see one of these, which it's highly lack, likely you will not. But in the case you do, you know, uh, just do what I said. Don't be afraid to go out there and just be safe and enjoy the outdoors and enjoy your lives. Don't don't live it in a shell. Absolutely. You know, Absolutely. can't live it in a shell. Now, really quick, before we end this, I kind of want to, I want to, now, there's been a lot of people that talk about going out in the woods and, you know, um, being, being prepared. Now, you and I just spoke about this and, and you kind of, you kind of agreed with me. Um, if you're going out in the woods and you're going with your family and you, let's say, I don't know, don't want to carry a rifle or something, that new round, and I'm not, I, I'm, I, I'm not I, uh, um, sponsored by this company, but there's a new round from Fort Scott Munitions. It's called Tumble While Imp Upon Impact. And you and I talked about it a little bit. There's an 80, 80 grain and 115 grain. And they're taking out bears with a nine millimeter round and yes. wild boar. And I said, what do, you, what do you think if I went out in the woods and I had my Ruger Security 9 with me and I came up against the dog man and I pumped two to three rounds of this, do you think I might make it out of the woods? Yes, I think you would. With this new round that's been developed, it's... Uh... It does a lot of damage. I'm wondering, I'm wondering if this company had any, you know, I'm wondering if there was any knowledge of these, of these, cre you know what I mean? Like just. Yeah. I, I mean, it could have led to the development yeah. of this bullet for all I know. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's <laughs> yeah. pretty amazing. This round is, yeah. uh, the damage that it does and it's a nine millimeter. You, you think I watched a video of a guy, he had, uh, I think it was a Ruger PC-9, and yep. I have one, great little rifle, and he's a, a black bear, pop, one shot, the bear does a roll, and it's over. And I was like, no, no, what? And yep. yeah, and it's... It, Everybody thought that video was fake. Yep. Okay. <laughs> You're going to spend a lot of money to get somebody to bring a black bear in that's trained and can do all this. You're going to spend tens of thousands of dollars to get them to do that. Yeah. So, so. guys, Fort Scott Munitions, TUI, Tumble Upon Impact, 80 to 115 grain. If you guys are going in the woods... And you, you got just yeah, even on a hike, and yeah. you got invest, no yeah, invest in that, invest in that round because if by chance you do stumble upon one of these, 
even if you don't stumble upon one of these and you stumble upon a bear or a mountain lion, you yeah. know, at least you're walking out, you know? <laughs> yeah. But practice your yeah. bullet placements as well, too. Till, till, we get, till somebody tries one on the dog man or werewolf or even a Bigfoot. I don't think I'd try it on Bigfoot. No. I'd, I'd be scared it'd make it mad, just to be honest. But yeah. That's just my opinion. I don't know. I I don't know. Just when they when they did the dissection of the bear, that was... It was pretty. Yeah, it was tore up. But if you, I mean, if you mag dump it, maybe. <laughs> yeah. I mean, yeah, if you hit him every time, <laughs> yeah, you, you, could, you could probably got him. Yeah. <laughs> So, guys, Fort Scott Munitions, I'm once again not sponsored by these guys, but if you're going out in the woods and you only have a 9mm pistol, at least this way you might make it out. So, Victor, it yeah. was great having you on. I appreciate it. Do me a favor. Don't right. hang up. And uh, thank you for coming back. You're welcome. And everybody else, y'all just enjoy the, enjoy the great outdoors. Amen to that. All right, guys, a lot of great information right there. I hope you enjoyed it. Man, I miss Victor. I truly do. I know you guys uh, do miss him as well. Um, I just remember afternoons like this, you know, a rainy spring morning or afternoon, excuse me, and uh, texting him, hey, how are you, talking to him, getting some crazy information that you know i would ask questions about and uh then share with you guys later on um just his his voice and in talking to him was great you know anyway guys i hope you enjoyed it as much as i enjoyed sharing it with you i'd like to thank you all for supporting the channel your support is what makes the channel continue to grow and go and honestly what makes the channel special Please everyone stay safe, happy, healthy, and ever vigilant, keeping an eye on our children, our pets, our family, and friends. These creatures are real. They're out there, and they are dangerous. Share this information with the people you love and care about, and it may just help save their lives someday. Until next time, never stop asking questions, never stop searching for answers, and God bless.